Northern Minnesota is known for iron mining, but now some want to start mining copper there too. And that idea has caused some controversy. This story was made possible in part by the Fund for Environmental Journalism of the Society of Environmental Journalists. Upstream from Duluth, along the St. Louis River, lies Minnesota's Masabi Range, the source of iron ore that drove the region's industrial development. Frank Ungaro is the executive director of the industry advocacy group Mining Minnesota. Well, we've had mining in the state of Minnesota for over 130 years, and it's all been iron ore mining, providing the steel mills with the raw materials they need to build this country. But the industry that made the region prosperous took a toll on the St. Louis River, which became an EPA area of concern in 1987. Lorraine Boissonneau is an independent journalist who's reported on the mining industry for Great Lakes now. Any type of mining is extractive, so it has an impact on the environment. And in the case of the iron mines, it's now thought that Iron mining is the largest source of mercury in the Lake Superior Basin. Millions of dollars have been spent to clean up the St. Louis River, and progress has been made. But now a new proposed mining operation has raised concerns. Something's coming, Minnesota. Something that'll awaken these sleeping giants and not only put them back to work, but create a whole new generation of miners and the businesses to support them. Polymet's copper nickel mine is coming, Minnesota. Modern, safe, and brimming with opportunity for all of us. Polymet Mining, a Toronto-based company now owned by Swiss mining conglomerate Glencore, began the environmental review process for NorthMet in 2004. NorthMet would produce copper, nickel, and other metals. It would use facilities from a shuttered iron mine, including a tailings basin to hold mine waste, and some feel it's a threat to the environment. It's crazy to clean the river only to allow it to be polluted. For more than 20 years, Nancy Schultz has studied the area's waterways and worked to protect them as the water projects coordinator for the Fond du Lac band of Lake Superior Chippewa. This part of the estuary was the Fond du Lac traditional homeland before European contact. This is where there were rice camps and maple sugar bush and fishing camps and hunting grounds. Under the Treaty of 1854, the Lake Superior Chippewa ceded much of what is now northern Minnesota to the U.S. government, but retained the rights to hunt, fish, and harvest wild rice in the ceded territories. That connection through the treaties means that we have an expectation that those resources that were retained under the treaty will be kept healthy and accessible for tribal members to access to harvest. Iron mining in the Masabi Range has already caused environmental damage. The St. Louis River is starting to recover now, but Schult fears copper mining could endanger the gains that have been made. The pollution that is unabated from the former taconite mining there, now we're going to put a more toxic waste material on top of it and not control it well. Throughout the environmental review process, Polymet has insisted that they have the technology to mine copper without harming the environment. In fact, in March of 2019, Polymet received the final permit required to move forward with the North Met project. But lawsuits kept the work on hold, and opponents doubt Polymet's assurances that the environment will be protected. Paula Maccabee is the advocacy director and counsel for Water Legacy, an organization founded to fight sulfide mines like NorthMet. Across the world, any time that copper mining, sulfide mining, has been done in a water-rich environment like that in Minnesota, it has resulted in toxic pollution. In terms of sulfide mining's efficacy in a water-rich environment, it has a 100% failure rate in terms of protecting the water. Mine opponents also worry about Polymet's planned tailings basin, a two and a half square mile man-made lake designed to hold industrial wastewater from the mining operation. 
and it poses two risks. First, it, it poses a risk of seepage, seepage through groundwater that then goes into wetlands and goes into streams and poisons the downstream St. Louis River. The second risk, catastrophic failure, a rare occurrence, but not unheard of. In 2014, in British Columbia, a tailings pond collapse sent more than 6 billion gallons, that's 24 million cubic meters of mine waste into two nearby lakes and rivers. And catastrophic dam failure can go as much as 300 miles downstream. In other words, far enough even not only to affect the St. Louis River, but even to affect Lake Superior. Despite these concerns, North Met has its supporters. PolyMet is proposing to mine copper, nickel, platinum, palladium, cobalt, and some gold. We use these metals every day in everything we do in our lives. We have an opportunity to mine these metals here with Minnesota's jobs, Minnesota's strict environmental protections, and benefit the state of Minnesota. PolyMet says the new mine operation will directly create 360 jobs and indirectly create hundreds more. In Hoyt Lakes, an iron range town near the proposed facilities, supporters hope the new mine will mean new prosperity. This is then mayor of Hoyt Lakes, Minnesota, Mark Skelton, speaking in 2013. We are pro-mining. We are pro-environment. And we are pro putting our citizens to work. More than 20 lawsuits were filed over the North Met project, and a number were decided in PolyMet's favor. But in January of 2020, the new mine was dealt a significant blow. The Minnesota Court of Appeals has rejected some of the most important permits for the planned PolyMet copper nickel mine in northeastern Minnesota, in a major victory for environmentalists. In its ruling, the Minnesota Court of Appeals called for the state's Department of Natural Resources to conduct a, quote, contested case hearing. Basically, the two sides, PolyMet and the people who are opposing the PolyMet project, would argue about the signs of how much the environment might be at risk from this project. And that would be the first time those arguments would be heard in front of a judge. PolyMet, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, and the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources took the issue to the state Supreme Court, which will now have to decide if the permits were issued properly or if the company and its opponents should provide more research on the potential environmental risks. And so now that multiple permits are under review again, that means there's a chance that the Supreme Court will decide that it might be too risky for the mine to move forward. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.